Hello, today I'll be presenting our systematic approach on the creation of barium sensing calixarine in order to detect neutrinoless double beta decay. Now, to give some background, neutrinoless beta decay is a rare radioactive process involving the spontaneous conversion of two neutrons into two protons. On the graph displayed to the left, we see that there are two types of double beta decay. The first displays a spontaneous emission of two electrons in neutrinos, concluding in a small amount of energy and a higher abundance. The second double beta decay emits two electrons and two neutrinos, which annihilate, therefore leading to a larger sum of energy, but a lower abundance. This process has mathematically been proven, but experimentally not seen. Now, our goal is to synthesize barium sensing molecules in order to show that neutrinoless beta decay is occurring in high pressure xenon gas. We also displayed an image of the time production chamber as this method of detection allows us to witness double beta decay occurring. Now, in brief description, energetically charged particles come in through the box. There's an electric field in place allowing us to observe barium ions drift towards the far face of the box where we have our highly selective barium sensing detectors. Once barium is drifted towards the far face, we are able to observe the drifting of electrons to the anode wired planes. We will see a flash of light moving across the screen showing us the electrons moving over time. Based on the speed the electron moves, we can determine whether we would receive low or high energy from the electrons. Now looking at our computational studies, we utilize computational studies in order to predict which fluorophores would fluoresce in the presence of barium ions. The figures laterally display the effects of barium ions binding to the calixarine. The barium ion binding creates a pi overlap between the benzyl linker and the fluorophore, therefore allowing the emission of a photon. Now to look more in depth into the mechanism of the calixarine, we see that there are three key structures which include the binding domain, the aromatic linker, and the fluorophore. Both structures differ in that one uses naphthalamide while the other uses bodipi as a fluorophore. They essentially behave similarly in that they are able to fluoresce in the region we want them to and are able to attach to the slides. They are just structurally different. Now, transitioning onto the creation of calixarine with an naphthalamide, we would have an aromatic electrophilic substitution of one fluoro for nitrocyclohexane in which then goes through tosylation or as we would refer to as the activation step. Following, it goes through the addition of calixarine through nucleophilic substitution. Then the addition of phenyl groups to the phenyls. We then would use the hydrogenation process to turn the nitro into an amino group. And lastly, we would reduce the azide into the amine. Now as for synthesis two, in order to create the calixarine with the bodipi, we would have tosylation in order to activate. We then add the calixarine, Tosylation then allows us to add the ethane groups in a less harsh reaction than our first synthesis. We would then use the Vilsmeyer hack process to install aldehydes to the cyclohexane to the bottom of the structure. We would lastly then add the fluorophore, bodipi, in a three step process. First, we add the pyrrole groups. We then create a double bond to the centered ring. And lastly, we would add the boron. Now, as far as challenges, we have acknowledged the challenges in relation to attaining the desired conformer, the cone formation. The conformer is changed based on the substituent that is found on the lower ring. We have observed inconsistent data in relation to smaller versus larger substituents leading to the cone shape, therefore leading us to work further on attaining more consistent results with our desired configuration. Now, as for future directions, we show a previous report in which we had dry phase fluorescence studies that showed single ion fluorescence. We hope to show with our molecules once we finish synthesizing the process. Now, as for conclusions, we have identified two calixarines based heavy metal sensing compounds. We have constructed a possible pathway to synthesizing this molecule. And we aim to finish the synthesis of these molecules and test them in both dry and wet fluorescent studies in the future. We want to thank our collaborators, Dr. Tan Vong for the computational studies, Dr. Benjamin Jones from the physics department and the next collaboration. We also want to thank the NSF and Welch Foundation for funding. Thank you.